Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Ursh, and this is another movie review. This is Inferno, directed by the legendary Italian horror filmmaker Dario Argento, released in 1980. And the film stars Irene Miracle in the role of Rose Elliott, uh, Lee McCloskey in the role of Mark Elliott, her brother in the film, uh, and of course Daria Nicolodi, who's in so many of Argento's films. And I guess she actually wrote the story for this movie, really, uh, but didn't get any credit for it, but she got to be in the movie. Uh, I guess that's kind of a compromise, I don't know. Um... So, uh, the film also stars Veronica Lazar in the role of Mater Tenembrarum. <laughs> uh, so, the film basically centers around this woman, Rose, who, um, she buys this book called The Three Mothers at this local antique shop across the street. And Rose lives in this giant, huge, gothic apartment building uh, in New York. And uh, so she reads this book, The Three Mothers, which centers around these three uh, women who are basically like a coven of witches. Uh, one being Mater Lacrimarum, the uh, Lady of Tears. Uh, one being Mater Suspiriorum, the Lady of Sighs. And the last one being Lady Tenebrarum, the Lady of Darkness. <laughs> and apparently they... They, like, control the world, like, basically. Uh, one of them controls Rome, one of them controls uh, Freiburg, Germany, and the other uh, is in New York. And uh, that being uh, the one that this film is based around. And, of course, the previous one was is what Suspirio was centered around, so yeah. Uh, the last one, I guess, was The Mother of Tears, which was released... Not until 2007, so yeah. <laughs> so they call this the Mother, uh, the Three Mothers Trilogy. <laughs> uh, one being Suspiria, then Inferno, and then the Mother of Tears. Uh, and then of course you have the Three Ladies of Sorrow. Uh, and this story uh, was loosely based around this poem called uh, Suspiria de Profundis uh, by Thomas Quincy. Uh, and it was about the three fates and graces in Greek mythology. Uh, so I thought that was really interesting. And uh, this is a really interesting movie. It's pretty kind of out there, you know. Uh, it has some similarities to Suspiria, where we're dealing with witches and witchcraft and stuff like that. And it has that supernatural element like Suspiria had. Um, but... Unfortunately, this film got a pretty limited release, so it didn't end up being a big hit, you know, like Suspiria was for Argento, which is probably his biggest, most well-known film. Um, but Inferno certainly has developed a cult following, for sure, and I think it's well-deserved. Uh, I think it's definitely overlooked. I think it's like a hidden gem, um, because I think this is a great film, you know? <laughs> Now, unfortunately, Dario Argento was sick at the time. He was ill. And uh, he enlisted the help of, believe it or not, Mario Bava and his son Lamberto Bava to help kind of direct a few scenes, you know, because uh, Argento was really feeling ill. And some scenes that Argento filmed, he had to film, like, on his back and stuff because he hurt so bad. <laughs> um, but... They came through in the clutch form, and uh, I think this is a great film to me. It's classic Argento in pretty much every way, especially the lighting is very similar to Suspiria. you got these really vibrant blue and red and yellow and green lights everywhere. It's almost ridiculous at times. It's like one scene, this girl is sitting in a car, and it's raining outside, and we see all these blue lights and yellow lights and green lights flashing. It's like, where are all these lights coming from? <laughs> uh, literally, some scenes, 
one side of the room would be bright blue and the other side is bright red. I'm like, <laughs> even some scenes there's like a pink light coming through. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> it's kind of almost like to the point of being ridiculous at times, but it's beautiful to look at. It's like a painting, you know. Uh, and I love it. It's really cool. Uh, so what happens is Rose actually believes this three mothers book to be real like because she is living in this building that she believes could be one of the houses of the three mothers you know um built by this alchemist who i guess is the one who wrote the book so apparently she believes this to be a true story and uh these three mothers are really out there, and she's living in the lair of the house of one of these witches. Uh, in this case, Major Tana Browram, the Lady of Darkness. Uh, so, she enlists the help of her brother, who is living in Rome, which is one of the other <laughs> uh, places where the one of the mothers lives there, you know. Or at least according to the book. And weird stuff does start to happen in Rome as well. Um, because when her brother, Mark, uh, who is in music school, this music college, uh, that's where we see him in the classroom. And that's when he opens the letter from his sister, Rose. And he starts to read it and he starts to, like, get all weirded out. Uh, so he takes off out of there and... He leaves the letter there, and his friend Sarah picks it up. And Sarah reads the story, and she's very intrigued, and she starts to buy into it. And she goes to the local library to buy a copy of The Three Mothers, and bad things start to happen around her. <laughs> she is stalked by this mysterious dark figure with the black gloves, like we see in all of Argento's movies, that kind of a little bit of that classic giallo style in there you know even though this is definitely more of a supernatural horror f uh, film it still has some of those elements of the giallo you know and uh some brutal kills at that um uh, and yeah so once sarah starts investigating she gets stalked by this crazed killer you know and and she ends up um stumbling into the lair of this madman who's like he takes off the gloves and there's like they're like these really long creepy like disfigured hands they're like what is up with this guy and he's got these burning uh, fires going and these cauldrons filled with like acid or something and he grabs the girl and tries to shove her head into the cauldrons filled with acid or whatever it is <laughs> oh man but she manages to get away but eventually the killer catches up with her and she gets brutally stabbed <laughs> and uh and this one guy who tries to help sarah um you know watch over her because she's alone and she's freaking out uh, the poor guy gets stabbed right through the neck, one side to the other. You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> really nasty. Killer takes, and we see the killer take the knife right out and stab Sarah with it. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Classic Argento, uh, over the top, you know, drawn out murder scenes. Uh, and this film is no exception. <laughs> and, uh, Eventually, Mark does end up going to New York, packing up and going to New York, and she finds that Rose is gone. Apparently, Rose um, is being stalked, too, by the witch uh, with the yellow eyes. We see the yellow eyes in the darkness. Uh, so, yeah, the Mita Tenembrarum caught up with Rose, unfortunately, before Mark even got there, and she makes a grisly fate <laughs> with this like homemade guillotine that the witch slams down their neck and uh, like several times like flaw, flaw, flaw. <laughs> it's brutal as hell 
And, uh, yeah, so when Mark gets there, he starts looking around. Uh, Rose isn't anywhere to be found, you know. Um, but she does run into this girl, Elise, who was a friend of Rose's, uh, who was played by Daria Nicolodi. And uh, she does a fantastic job in this movie, just like she does every movie that she stars in, uh, made by Dario Argento. Uh, she almost steals the film, but she's only in it for, like, say 20 minutes maybe uh so yeah she definitely uses that to her best ability and uh she shines in that 15 or 20, 20 minutes or so uh and she befriends mark and you know she starts telling a little bit about how rose was ranting and raving about uh the mothers the three mothers book um uh, so he starts trying to figure out what the heck's going on, you know. And he finds that there's blood on the carpet at, in her room. Uh, and it leads to this weird, like, side entrance that Elise tells him nobody uses. Nobody goes that way. And, you know, he starts investigating and it leads down to the uh, cellar, you know, where there's all kinds of crazy stuff. And he... He slowly starts putting things together with some of the people he meets at the apartment building. We meet this creepy-ass butler. We meet this nurse who's taking care of this old man. And, you know, he starts finding out about what's going on with these people, you know. <laughs> and and uh, eventually he puts things together. Um, but he starts having weird, like, almost like heart attacks or chest pains or something when he goes down there. And... Uh, he wakes up and he sees the nurse there, and, you know, um, they tend to him and take care of him, but um, eventually he finds out what's really going on, and we have this blazing, fiery inferno, if you will, <laughs> in the climax of the film, and it's fantastic, and it's over the top, it's, it's awesome, I love it. Uh, yeah, so I definitely highly recommend Inferno, uh, directed by Dario Argento, released in 1980. Uh, it's a really strange but interesting film. There is some wild, over-the-top moments, like one girl gets attacked by a, a, a legion of cats, and <laughs> they bite at her and scratch her, another dude gets attacked by rats, you know? <laughs> Uh, and, this, and that's a crazy scene, too, when the guy gets attacked by the rats and they're eating them. And this guy uh, at a restaurant sees it happening and he goes to run over to, you think, help the guy. You know, the guy's being killed. He's being eaten. Uh, instead, the guy stabs him to death in the neck over and over and over him and kills the old man. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, there's some wild, crazy uh, WTF moments like that, but still, I think it's very enjoyable, it's very entertaining, and it's got a great score by um, Keith Emerson of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Uh, I think he does a great job. You got those weird keyboards and piano music. It's very eerie, um, but awesome. I love it. So yeah, I love this movie. Uh, definitely highly recommend Dario Argento's Inferno. I give it two devil horns way up. So definitely run and grab Inferno. And this is a great uh, release by Blue Underground, the Blu-ray. Definitely check it out, guys. And thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared.